What's up gamers and happy new year. It's 2017 and this will be the first recording of the year at Heroes Charge. That's right, I haven't forgot about you guys. I decided to bring you a new video uh, mostly because I recently hit level 104 and I kind of wanted to explain the significance of 104. So let's get started. Basically, what makes one level 104 so important is that it's the very first time where your heroes can be fully equipped at red plus two. Now, this doesn't apply to all heroes. So, I'll kind of give you some examples here. Uh, we're going to go with Death Knight because he is uh, basically my tank uh, for my arena team as far as offense is concerned. I wanted to show you a couple of things too while I'm at it. So Death Knight now has, like I said, he's red plus two, everything is equipped. So he's literally the strongest he could possibly be. Well, as far as um, being promoted and everything else is concerned and revolved. However, there is more you can do to make them better. As you can tell in my last few videos, I've been preaching about the hero's cap, how important that is. Let me show you why it's important. So basically a lot of you know you can hit the stats button to take a look at their, you know, stats that you can see. Intelligence, agility, strength, things of that nature. Well, if you go to the very bottom, it'll actually show you the bonuses you get from the training field as well. So because of the training field, my Death Knight has almost 10,000 extra hit points, an extra 143 armor, and close to 90 magic resistance. So, that makes him a lot better. He stays alive longer, which keeps the rest of your team alive longer. And that's why that's important. So, um, keep using the training field. You're going to make your guys better. And not just the training field, but um, when you go to Heroes Camp, you also want to... I mean, like I said, training field right here, this is where I go to make him better. See, I'm still working on Death Knight. He's not done yet. Um, and of course you want to level up the training field. Mine's at 35. Uh, I can't do 36 yet until I level my war hall to level six and get the appropriate, you know, uh, resources, but I'm not pushing for level six quite yet. Um, the other thing you want to do too, if possible, is go to the academy and, you know, use the academy to also boost up the stats and abilities of the heroes you're trying to make better. Now, I don't remember... If there's one for Death Knight, if there is, and I don't have it yet, I am working on three others right now. So I'm hoping, actually, actually it'll tell me. Let me see if one of these even has it that I'm working on. I'm just curious. I actually haven't looked. Okay, these are other heroes, it looks like, which is fine. I'm just a little curious as to what the future holds after I get this completed. Well, either way, um, I don't know if Death Knight has one or not. If it if they does, I haven't seen it or I've done it and just forgotten. But either way, you know, the academy is another way to make your people better. Um, they boost up different attributes, you know, depending on who you're trying to make better. So, you know, you have ways to make your favorite heroes really good. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily go with the meta all of the time. If you have a hero you like, push them and make them better. Simple as that. Um, now I did mention earlier that there were some heroes that cannot be fully equipped. So I'll kind of give you an example. We're going to go with Sorceress. Alright, so right now I'm leaving her at red plus one. Because if you go to gear and you look at her red plus two items, the very first item right next to the question mark. If you look at the bottom, it says require hero level 105. That basically means that... I'm not going to be able to get her fully equipped when I get her to red plus two at the moment. And because of this, I've decided to hold off on doing anything with Sorceress until I reach level five. You might be thinking, well, you mean she's still going to be good even with all the other equipment. And, and you are right. But I think at this point, it would be better to focus on those who can be maxed at 104 and make them good. I do also want to give a shout out to someone who did make a comment a while back, he stated that I should consider making Ninja Assassin Red Plus 2. Um, he gets some really good, you know, equipment that helps him out in the long run, and I absolutely agree. And a good thing about Ninja Assassin, and I am working on him slowly, is that if you get him the Red Plus 2, he can actually be equipped at level 104. 
so he will be worth actually pushing. Uh, it is going to be a while before I get him up there because not only am I working on Ninja Assassin, but I'm also working on Divine Knight. That's right, the Hot Cell Hero for December. Um, I actually just got on the four stars yesterday, right before the uh, year ended, so that's kind of interesting. Basically, I spent a bunch of, you know, gems to in the chest shop for the hot cell to keep buying and buying to hope that I would get enough soul stones, and I finally did. It took a lot, by the way. I'm talking thousands upon thousands of gems to get it to enough soul stone, which is a hundred, to get them to four stars. So, uh, and I do believe it's worth it. Uh, and it is going to be important for this video because I am going to do a little bit of the uh, War of the Gods, I think it's called. And now that he's four stars, uh, he's going to be a much better asset uh, to that team. And just to give you guys a little bit of education, for those of you who do play War of the Gods, uh, if you have Hot Soul Heroes, push them to four stars because they're going to make a, at least four stars. It's going to make them much better and give you a higher win percentage. So we're going to War of the Gods. I'll give you some examples here. So we're going to go ahead and log in and we might do a couple of fights. So we'll search for an opponent here. Alright, so he's going to select first. And I want to give you some strats as far as how to do well. Um, Alright, so... You know, you get to more or less select who you think is going to be better against who he's playing. He's playing Turtle Fighter. Typically, I pick Imperial Executioner and uh, Commander, actually, just because she's really good at dealing tons of damage at once. In the event that, you know, Turtle Fighter rolls back to the front. Okay. Um, now, since they have a middle line mage... I'd like to put, or a female, I should say, I should put Rose Fencer up there to more or less stop uh, her and her Vengeance Spears in her tracks. And then I'm going to get my own uh, take. We're going to use Death Knight. And I'm going to find a backline here once he decides what he wants to do. If he uses Arcane Sapper, I'm definitely going to run um, Lightbringer. Uh, but he's using Puppet Master, which is, ugh, it's going to be rough. I'm um, going to just stick with, hmm, that's a toughie, because Puppet Master is going to destroy whoever I put in the back easily. Uh, I'm probably going to stick with the little lady down there, and as your second, as your sixth hero, I recommend Hidden Needle. This is something that um, Hawk Swag, Mr. Swag himself, uh, kind of showed me. If you put Hidden Needle as your sixth, uh, she comes in and she's going to be quickly like cleaning house for you. Um, I did decide to put in Witch against Puppet Master because I think that Witch, when she goes ultimate, and then if Puppet Master goes ultimate afterwards, she'll almost insta-kill him. At least that's the theory. But unfortunately, it looks like she's going to die pretty quickly here. It doesn't look like my team, my uh, plan's working at all, unfortunately. The good news is Hidden Needle has her, uh, oh, never mind, she died. I was going to say Hidden Needle had her pink aura, but it didn't seem to matter too much. So that didn't really work out very well. They're, uh... That Tarot Prophet does dirty things, I have to say. Alright, so in the second round, now that I'm behind, I'm going to start with uh, Turtle Fighter. Normally I don't pick Turtle Fighter unless my opponent is using uh, Rose Fencer, just to kind of distract him from my front line. But uh, since he's kind of put a good beating on me, i got to just use a solid team. Where is, there he is, Vengeance Spirit. And yes, I am using uh, Divine Knight this time. This you know, this person seems to be going with a tankish kind of thing. He's starting with Death Mage and Soul Hunter. And honestly, tanky type teams don't particularly work in this format. And now he's running two backline heroes, which means Puppet Master is going to have a field day with them. And I'm going to go with... 
Mm. Go ahead, Master Mage. And then as my sixth this time, I'm actually going to pick Ninja Assassin. Since he'll already have an almost, you know, halfway built up meter. And then he'll start off more or less going off when he runs in the field. Just kind of like what my opponent did too. I think he did the same thing last round. Uh, Ninja Assassin is another good sixth person to use. But yeah, if your opponent uses two or more backline heroes, Puppet Master is going to take advantage of that hardcore. Alright, so apparently he sees that I have two females that are going to be in the middle, so he's using Rose Fencer, which makes me happy that I use Turtle Fighter, because hopefully Turtle Fighter will distract Rose Fencer for a bit, keeping my females from, you know, being useless. We'll see if what I'm doing is actually means anything here. See, what I like is uh, Rose Fence has been kind of distracted, which means that my people have been able to do stuff. Well, see, now that Master Mage was the first to die, everybody's going off now, doing their thing, and we pretty much got this one now. That's also that's actually the biggest reason I run um, Master Mage, is because she's really good at, you know, making one person disappear, and when she dies, everybody goes off. So, my strats this time... Um, I'm going to go kind of with the same thing he's doing, except for I'm going to run uh, Griffin because he's pretty solid. Um, debating Soul Hunter. Um, not sure. Uh, we're probably going to go with that guy just because he's really good at just randomly destroying folks and I'm gonna go with uh, a guy you don't usually see me use uh, chemist I believe his name is he's pretty good too uh, you notice that he picked uh, ember blade now don't pick cloud walker if he picks ember blade just because uh, he ember blades pretty much the answer to cloud walker uh, and then we're going to put Sorceress in the back line because she's really tough. And then as my sixth, the other person that's really good as a sixth member is Emberblade, actually. Because you want him to be able to ultimate as soon as possible. So getting him up there right from the get-go is pretty much the way to win. Uh, I am a little scared of his head and needle. I'm not going to lie. If, if I don't kill head and needle pretty soon, I might end up losing. I'll be honest. And his six was a two star, which means it shouldn't do much. I say shouldn't. Uh, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to win this one. Desert Lycan's really good at, you know, randomly dealing a ton of damage to someone, typically. The holy damage you can't really deal with. <laughs> Alright, so their Ember, their Ember Blade's already more or less gotten started. Not really worried about that at the moment. We're already pretty much ahead at this point. Their hidden needle drop dead, which is good. That means they're not going to be taking a ton of damage. Oh, now my Ember Blade's around. Yeah, we pretty much got it. Look at that. Ember Blade already just hit the battlefield. But yeah, I mean, that was a pretty simple match. Actually, Ember Blade didn't have to do anything. Uh, Sorceress, of course, was the MVP of that last fight. She pretty much did all the work, it seems. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was pretty good. So, <clears throat> hopefully you see me do a, a mock fight like that will kind of give you an idea of, you know, how to do well in that format. I just wanted to show you one of those kind of fights. So, um, <clears throat> something else I kind of want to go over is pretty much my new arena teams in general. Uh, more just regular arena. I'm still not pushing Grand Arena yet. Uh, I've been consistently in the top 300, thankfully. I'm usually in the 200 somewhere. And uh, usually if I do lose, uh, I'm able to get a rank up pretty well. I'll show you one of my defensive fights, and it's with this team right here. Let me move my little chat head. Uh, I'm using Puppet Master, Vengeance Spirit, Cloud Walker, um, Griffin, and Death May Knight. Excuse me, Death Knight. I almost went a video without calling him the wrong name. Anyway... Um, I like Cloud Walker in the defensive team only because he's mainly there to distract him with his clones and stuff. Uh, while the rest of the people either kill him or keep yourselves alive. 
So let's take a look at one of my defensive matches with that setup. Okay, we played against Jung Ho uh, 13 hours ago. He tried to take my rank. I am on the right side. So he did use a team that I don't think is really good for this kind of a thing. Um, he has, I don't know, he's using Chaplin in an offensive team. That's not really smart. I don't think. Now don't get me wrong, my team is pretty weak, but I don't know, I don't agree with that. Everything else seems pretty solid in my opinion. I just didn't agree with the whole Rose Fencer thing. I like Chaplin as far as in defense, but not really in offense. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it looks like I'm going to lose, but at the end of the day, I don't lose. Now, of course, you know, they did lots of damage. Like their Sorceress, their Rose Fencer, their Turtle Fighter. I mean, all of that, I mean, dealt some good damage to me, but... At the end of the day, Death Maid was able to keep a lot of my people alive. Vengeance Spirit was able to stun certain people at times. Uh, although Turtle Fighter kind of messes up Vengeance Spirit a little bit. Um, Cloud Walker, like I said, he's usually there to put out clones to kind of distract uh, whoever's in their back and middle line. And then Puppet Master can take advantage of the backline heroes because he's probably the best backline hero I can use at this moment. I don't use Lightbringer anymore only because... He um, he has to be level 105 to be fully equipped. So I'm trying to just focus on people that are that can be fully equipped at level four, level 104. All right, and then there was another fight that I actually won. I just wanted to get a little bit more ranked just so I could show you guys an actual offensive win. My team is about the same. The only difference is instead of running Cloudwalker, I'm running Soul Hunter. Um, uh, not Soul Hunter. Um, Fallen Dominion. I had talked about how Fallen Dominion was kind of crappy in higher levels, but to be perfectly honest, at 104 with Red Plus 2, he's actually been doing good things. Now, the fact that this person is using this team as a defensive thing, I think is kind of wrong. It's a very, it's a team that seems to be very volatile. It doesn't have much protection at all. Which is why I was easily able to beat this team. I mean, granted, yeah, he had a ninja assassin and all, but I don't think that was good enough. So, here you go. You have uh, Fallen Dominion actually dealt over 100k, more than Griffin, which is usually a surprise. Uh, at least it used to be. Now I'm kind of used to it. Uh, Vengeance Spirit is actually really good on dealing damage, too, in Arena. And honestly... I was, I always thought that Vengeance Spirit had potential, but she's actually a lot better than I thought she was now that I've actually been using her in more than just Guild Raid. Because Vengeance Spirit is great in Guild Raid, but uh, in Arena, she's actually really good too. I just found out recently, and I'm happy. And I just got, like I said, Puppet Master is actually the last hero that I got to Red Plus 2 fully equipped, and um, he's phenomenal. I mean... You know, he was able to more or less get 100k damage mainly because he had two people in their back line that he could take advantage of. So, that's the thing. But yeah, looking at my opponent's uh, defensive team there, either A, he was, giving, he was giving somebody a win and ended up giving it to me instead, or B, this is the team he uses offensively, which is usually good, but defensively it's not so good. So, that's kind of where we're at with that. Okay, so, uh, what I can do real quick, if you want, why not, is I'll see if I can go for a higher rank. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm 99% sure I'm not going to beat any of these guys. But just for funsies, we're going to try it. So, we're going to try to fight this guy from uh, Two-Face. And I know it's Two-Face because it says 2F. We're going to use the same team, um, just because it's just the team I've been using. Um... And yeah, that's pretty much it, so let's give it a shot. Or should we just have fun and run? You know, that's, we're going to have a little fun. Hold up. Let's take out Griffin for Divine Knight, just to see what happens. I'm actually curious. I never actually ran him in Arena yet. He's only four stars, so he's not going to be super great, but Hot Cell Heroes at four stars are still pretty phenomenal. 
And he's not really fully equipped either. But apparently we're going to get our butts kicked real quick. I'm slowing it down just a little here. I forgot that it was on times four. But yeah, we're pretty much about to die here. Yeah, we don't even need to see the stats there. We just got slaughtered. Uh, it was just kind of for funsies anyway. But, I mean, that's kind of the point of the video. I just kind of wanted to show you guys um, what to expect in 104. Uh, my recommendation, and you don't have to do this, but my recommendation is once you hit 104, just make sure that you have certain heroes that you think are going to be strong that can be fully equipped at red plus two. If they're only, if they're not going to be fully equipped, I think I'd say personally leave them at red plus one and that should be good enough for you and let other people shine. Like I said, death mage is really good. Uh, as far as tanking, um, cloud Walker is decent on defense and he's also good in, in uh, the guild raid. So you want him for that reason too. Vision Spirit, amazing in both Guild Raid and in uh, Arena, so really strong. Fallen Dominion, also both good in Guild Raid and Arena. Um, Griffin is just solid for Arena. Uh, I don't particularly care for him in Guild Raid, but he's really good in Arena. Puppet Master, he's also good in both Arena and Guild Raid. So, I mean, those are definitely some good people to consider. Uh, that's what I'm doing at least. Uh, Ninja Assassin, um, like the person who commented told me a while back, uh, Ninja Assassin is good for both Arena and Guild Raid, so push him. Uh, I'm also going to push Hidden Needle because uh, I've already got her almost there. Um, and her Red Plus 2 item, of course, requires level 104, so that's definitely doable. Uh, sorry, I got a little bit of family there kind of texting me or messaging me. Uh, I'm trying to think of anyone else that you, we should consider. Uh, honestly, I'm not really sure about too much else. Oh, actually, there is one more person that I'm considering pushing. Um, he's a frontline hero. I think he can be 104. This guy, dual wield. I just got him five stars a few days ago. Um, I'm not sure how good he's going to be. But um, I think that, uh, you know, since he's kind of the last one I've gotten from the Soulstone shop... Uh, I think I should give him a try, because those heroes are typically decent. As far as gear is concerned, yeah, I can push him to 104 if I wanted to, because that's what his weapons and or items require. So, he might be someone that I'm going to consider as well, putting up there. Um, mainly because I got him to 5 star recently. And I think there was one more. Was it Witch? I don't think it was Witch. I think she requires a... Yeah, she requires a level 5 uh, item, so she's not it. There was one more, but I can't think of who else I wanted to push. It is rather unfortunate that Sorceress has to write to 105, but, I mean, at the same time, that's fine. Puppet Master is all you need, really, for backline heroes at, at level 104. Um, so, I'm content as far as that's concerned. Uh, like I said, my main push is going to be Ninja Assassin uh and divine knight i mean those are really the two that i'm going to be pushing first and then i'm going to get dual wield up there and then if anyone else comes up or if anyone else gives me ideas i'm definitely willing to test them out and give them a shot um and you know i'm just going to reiterate use the heroes cap seriously guys um you can literally all day spam you know getting somebody up there and it only takes about an hour to get them, you know, fully done. So you don't necessarily have to speed it up. You can if you want to. Like, if you have a bunch of gems you don't mind wasting, you can do that. But I don't think it's necessary. You know, start it. Do something with your life for an hour. Come back. Start another one. And just keep putting those stats. Because it's going to make a big difference. So right now, I'm solely focusing on Death Knight. Just because I want to make sure my people are maxed one at a time. You work out one at a time, they're going to be the best they can be. Instead of dividing your attention and you're, you know, suffering because of it. You know, focus on one at a time. And same with Academy. Find somebody that you really think is going to be good. That you really like personally. Find whatever you have that can make them good. Like, for example, I've been working on Vengeance Spirit on the side. Uh, I've gotten three of five of her agility boost there. So I got to slowly, you know, work on that. Um, not sure there's anything. Oh, yeah, she has another one that uh, I started as well. Um, basically increasing her armor penetration, which is important. That's why I'm able to deal so much damage. Um, I've done two out of five of those. 
So I'm working on Vengeance Spirit as far as the Academy is concerned, and I'm working on Death Knight as far as training feels concerned. Um, but yeah, find some people you want to focus on and just start doing the bit, the most you can in both the training field and the academy. Uh, I can't stress that any further. I mean, that's just, you know, what you need to do if you want to make your people better on top of just equip, you know, enchanting and promoting. Um, also, before I end the video, I want to give a special shout out to all of you guys that watch my Heroes Charge videos. I'm going to be honest with you. I get more views on these videos than I get on Seven Nights and Hearthstone combined. So that's awesome. Like I, I've looked at like, I think two of my videos has more than a hundred views, which completely surprised the crap out of me because, you know, I mean, I'm kind of new to this whole, like, you know, YouTube thing, uh, as far as making videos. And you know, I wasn't really expecting to get a lot of views in general, you know, like I figured maybe five or 10 people might watch my videos at a time here or there. Uh, I got about maybe 10 subscribers, give or take one or two. Um, so, I, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not expecting a lot of people to see these videos, but when I saw that Heroes Charge was getting more than 100 views on some of these videos, like, that really made me happy. And that's kind of one of those things that it kind of gives me more motivation to want to do more of these videos because obviously people are actually wanting to see these videos. People actually seem to care. And I like that. So I want to thank you guys for just watching. I don't even care if you like subscribe or donate or anything like that. Just the simple fact that you're actually watching these videos makes it all worth it. So thank you, viewers of Heroes Charge. You guys are awesome. Happy New Year. You guys take it easy.